guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I wanted to talk about the 1988 film Flesh Eater. This was one I hadn't heard about until fairly recently, and then I watched it on Tubi, I think, once or twice. I want to say twice, and then my friend gave me a really, really good deal on it. I think I paid like 10 bucks or 12 bucks for it, and uh, I decided to pick it up because I did enjoy it. So F Flesh Eater was a movie that sort of has a tie-in to the original Night of the Living Dead by George Romero. So this zombie here on the cover is Bill Hinsman. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Bill Hinsman is the first zombie you see in Night of the Living Dead, and that's how he sort of became, I guess, semi-famous. So he, I think, wrote, produced, directed, everything, this movie to sort of ride the coattails, if you will, of Night of the Living Dead, hence the name Revenge of the Living Dead. So it doesn't, it's not part of the movie series, but it has that little tie-in. So uh, I did find it interesting that Bill is the first zombie, I think, uh, on, on film ever. So the main point of the story is there are these teenagers that take a hayride during Halloween and they go to this farm and they're kind of like partying on the farm, splitting up, making out, you know, the normal sort of 80s schlocky um, thing you'd expect, I guess, uh, young adults to do. And they're sleeping together and making out and whatever else. And the, I think it's the guy that drops them off at the farmhouse who's doing the hay rides, comes across this tomb and it's buried and he opens it and there's like a warning message on it and he reads it and he thinks it's phony and Bill Hinsman the zombie comes out and kills the the uh, farmer and then proceeds to go after the young adults in the barn and that's how the movie kicks off so Throughout the film, some of the young adults are now trying to get away, find other people to help them, call the cops. The cops don't believe them. There's a decent amount of gore, but none of the gore looks great. Some of it's kind of cool, and then some of it just looks like a lot of red paint or something. It's totally like too thick and too bright, but it was fine. The makeup on the zombies is very boring in a way. It's just kind of like white face paint with some dark circles around their eyes. I didn't think it looked phenomenal or anything like that. But overall, it's a, a fun little schlocky, low-budget B-movie about zombies. And the tie-in to Night of the Living Dead because of Bill Hinsman makes it cool if you like that series. I was never the biggest fan of the Living Dead series, but I do find them fun. And this movie's fun. It's uh, It doesn't do anything new, necessarily. And some of the movie does sort of get repetitive. It sort of just stays on the same path throughout the film. The ending was pretty good, but not something that hasn't been done before. But the ending was pretty good. Uh, has a couple little twists and turns to it, if you will. And uh, that's the gist of the movie. People become zombies. They go after the, the teenagers or the young adults. They go after different families. And uh, the cops are trying to kind of uh, take care of everything by the end of the film. And that's the gist of it. This is the 4K and Blu-ray release from Vinegar Syndrome. I watched the regular Blu-ray because I have a 4K player on my Xbox One X. Uh, however, my TV is very, very low end. So it doesn't particularly look very different. So I just watched the regular Blu-ray on my Blu-ray player. It looked good. It does have the black bars on the left and the right, so it's, uh, I guess, 4 by 3 It's not, you know, across the whole screen. <clears throat> There's a brand new commentary track with the cinematographer, uh, the composer and producer, an interview with producer Andrew Sands, an interview with cinematographer, Remembering Bill with Bonnie Hinsman, which is his wife, Carnage and Compositions, an interview with composer Eric, Erica Portnoy, an interview with actress Heidi Hinsman, an interview with special makeup effects artist Jerry Geggerly, an interview with actor John Mowad, uh, an interview with unit manager Paul Giorgi, 
an interview with hairstylist and makeup artist Terry Godfrey, and extensive behind-the-scenes still gallery. So there's a lot of interviews and special features on here. It's a region-free 4K and Blu-ray set, uh, presented with high dynamic range, newly scanned and restored in 4K from the original 16mm negative. Reversible cover artwork and English subtitles. So I didn't even look at the other side of the artwork. Oh, it's the old, I think, DVD cover. I actually prefer the new art. I think it's much more graphic and stylized. But overall, it's a fun little zombie movie. It doesn't do anything really extraordinary, but it's fun. It would be a good, like, you know, B-movie Halloween night to watch zombie movies with your friends. As I said, I hadn't heard of this one until Vinegar Syndrome put it out, but it did seem to have its share of fans, and I did enjoy it. If I were to have to put a grade on it, a 6 or a 7 out of 10, it's not like amazing or does anything spectacular, but it's definitely fun, low-budget crap, and again, kind of has that cool tie-in with the Night of the Living Dead series. So let me know, guys, if you've seen Flesh Eater and what you thought of it, or if you do watch it because of this review, please come back and chime in. Thank you guys for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.